Through the early morning haze of the Arctic day, United States troops are on the move, streaming in by the thousands to take up strategic positions somewhere in Alaska. Battling nature high in mountain snows, gun crews take command of every pass and approach by land. Alaskan Flying Tigers, commanded by the son of China's famous General Cheneau, are constantly on the alert. Taking to their ships, ready for instant action, they're playing an important role in keeping the Japs from American soil. call in this northern outpost is the soldiers' biggest day. Letters from home for the men on guard in Alaska. In one of the greatest religious demonstrations ever held in America, 120,000 people assemble in Chicago's great soldier field to pray for the nation's armed forces. Before the shining altar of Christ, men and women of all faiths pledge allegiance anew to God and country as they ask for divine blessing upon the cause of the United Nations. Flying over jungle country, Army troop transports of the Panama Canal Defense Force practice the tactics they'll use in actual warfare. Paratroopers, as they call these modern infantrymen, perfecting the technique of attack from the air. On the ground, they quickly reform for an advance through tropical swamp, a smoke screen covering the assault. United States Army, prepared for action on any front. High spot of New York's summer theatrical season is the annual International Ice Carnival, a spectacular symphony of skating artistry. The climax of the pageant is the Parade of Champions. A sensation at 18, Donna Atwood. Jackson and Lanham in a duet they thought up all by themselves. Patriotic finale, the entire company in a dazzling salute to the flags of the United Nations. <laughs> Trains of troops and equipment moving by truck and by rail to a port of embarkation. First leg of the long journey to Australia. Giant ocean liners, now converted into grim gray transports, take aboard their wartime cargoes. Food, supplies, ammunition. Then come the soldiers. More soldiers going abroad since America entered the conflict than were sent overseas during the entire First World War. Crossing the equator, there's a lighter side as novices are introduced to the traditional realm of King Neptune. <laughs> Boxing matches helping relieve the monotony of long, weary days at sea. Through hostile waters, shipboard church services remind the men that religious freedom is one of the things for which they fight. Gunners 
leaders are on 24-hour watch. Constant target practice is the order of the day. Safe in port. Reinforcements for offensive in the Pacific. Brazil celebrates the 120th anniversary of her independence with a mobilization of manpower ready and determined to fight for that freedom. From the palace, President Getulio Vargas reviews the popular demonstration. Thronging the streets of the capital, thousands parade as an expression of their support of the government's war upon Germany and Italy. Dramatic, too, is the gesture of Argentina's former president, General Justo. An old friend of President Vargas, he came to place his sword in the service of Brazil. All Brazil, united for victory. Rio de Janeiro, piles of old scrap and junk appear in response to the government's appeal for vital war metals. Everyone, even the youngest, responds with patriotic fervor. Hundreds of tons of much needed scrap are collected to be converted into modern tanks and ships and guns. Guns for victory, for democracy and justice. United States, crack divisions of regular troops stage a spectacular review in honor of Brazil, their newest ally. Brazil's ambassador, Carlos Martins, taking the salute, sees a sample of United States military might, even as his own country mobilizes to march shoulder to shoulder for the common cause. Here is symbolized the bond between two great American nations. Now, as in the last war, Brothers in Arms.